Hi guys and welcome uh, to our next video. I suppose a logical place to continue before we go and wander into all these wonderful areas we're going to be covering on Something Feels Wrong, uh, I think a logical place to start would be immigration. And uh, while I'm no expert on immigration, um, and I'm disclosing now I'm certainly no immigration attorney, uh, over the past six years we have assisted over 1,400 files with our subscribers uh, who wanted to pursue immigration. So over six years and that many files, uh, you know, you get to learn something, at least you would hope to. So before we start going into all these other wonderful areas, for folks that are planning on coming here on a permanent basis, uh, first of all, I want to say things have changed, not so much with the actual laws, but with the requirements that it now takes to get your residency visa, which is the first step in applying to become a temporary, permanent, or eventually a citizen. I want to continue also, and, and it kind of pains me a bit, for over six years, while I was with the DR Escapes and uh, developed this second website, which I'm now donating my time to exclusively, because there is so much to say, and it's a more serious format, and it's kind of less cotton candy and more the real deal uh, as far as information goes. Um, things have changed with the requirements for residency and I've been after people for over six years to get started on it, to get grandfathered in. Like I said, look at the past post, the only laws in a nation that always throughout history felt the benefits of what's called grandfathering was the laws of immigration. Now, those that have already started the wheels, congratulations. Those, there's many, many people I know uh, will no longer, um, are no longer going to uh, be able to apply to obtain a residency visa. So what I did was, to make a long story short, this will be the first in what will probably be at least a two-part series, because immigration is an important thing to um, be well aware of for those who are planning on relocating on a permanent basis. I'm also going to discuss do I or do I not need to go into residency and eventual citizenship? What are the perils? What are the pros? What if I already have two passports? Uh, will it help? Will it hurt? All these, all these items we'll, we'll cover as well as any questions you want to forward to us. But I wanted to start, I was in the capital uh, taking care of some other business that I had and I ended up spending a few days there. While I was there I figured if I can kill two birds with one stone it'd be great to uh, see if I can secure an hour with the people that have helped us personally on our immigration and that have helped a lot of our more recent subscribers. And um, we had a nice meeting for about an hour and they agreed they would forward me some basic information and I wanted to forward them to make sure my copies were still um, valid, that the laws themselves have not been updated in the last couple of years. So here's what I got to start with, okay? Um, the preliminary questions that a competent firm is going to ask now. Remember, the laws haven't changed. The requirements to obtain your residency visa to come into the country to get your forms and pictures and medical exam and everything. That is what's changed and it's changed substantially. Okay, the immigration laws, uh, dear Mr. Solomon, the immigration laws have not changed. The information you sent us for review is still valid, the laws. However, what has changed is the criteria that the, de the visa department is now requiring for them to approve a residency visa. That's for them. Your paperwork's all been approved. What you need to qualify to get this visa to take the next step to get your cards and pictures and fingerprints and what have you. Okay? So, uh, 
the it's the residency visa requirements which have changed and as you know mr solomon this is the first requirement to apply for a residency permit continuing on in our first consultation this is when we would submit a letter and that's also going to change but we'll get to that in a different there's going to be a new format there now has to be and but uh, continuing on in our first consultation we normally use this type of email to verify if the foreigner will in fact be able to apply for a visa okay regards blah 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 now uh, just I'm using this old pelican box here one of my old camera boxes it makes a heck of a great sunshade so that's what's behind here but it, it is working wonderfully. Okay, so continuing on. It would be, this is a typical form letter. It's very short that, that, that you would receive. Dear Mr. and Mrs. blah, blah, blah. Thank you for your interest in our immigration services. My name is blah, blah, uh, immigration, uh, head of the immigration department at the blah, blah um, uh, law firm in Santo Domingo. Please be aware that the first step to obtain a residency permit is applying for a residency visa at your closest Dominican consulate. Note, this can no longer be done while in the Dominican Republic. There's a significant change. To qualify for a residency visa, you must qualify under one of the following criteria. B, a close relative of a Dominican, and excuse me one second here, so while I get this off, uh, there you go. Uh, to be a close relative of a Dominican citizen or legal resident, i.e. a wife or a child, a mother or a father, okay? Not a friend, not somebody you met, not someone that will back you. If you're successful in obtaining your residency, most law firms will act on your behalf as the, gar as the uh, person that knows you and verify those, that credential. So that's not an issue, okay? So that was first, close relative. Second, a retiree visa. A retiree is a foreign or Dominican individual who receives a monthly minimum of $1,500 U.S. or its equivalent in DR currency derived from a pension or a retirement income from a foreign source, government, official organizations, or foreign companies whose interest in permanently relocating their residency to the Dominican Republic and will thereon receive the benefits of his pension or retirement income in the country. Okay, bunch of legal jargon, one word. They're asking for residual, residual income. That's all you need to know, okay? Two, rentista. This is another way of uh, being able to qualify for your residency visa. For an individual who has been receiving a minimum fixed monthly income of US $2,000 or its equivalent in DR currency for the last five years, this income must be derived from a foreign source created by one of the following methods. One, deposits and or investments in banks abroad. Two, deposits or investments in, uh, excuse me, remittances from banks or financial institutions abroad. Number three, investments in foreign companies established abroad. Number four, Remittances derived from real estate properties on a residual basis they're talking about, i.e. rental income, not on a property that you just sold and it's a one-time transfer. Five, interest derived from securities issued in foreign currency abroad, which are deposited at, a finan at financial institutions legally authorizing to operate in the Dominican Republic. 
Number six, profits realized from investments and securities issued in foreign and or national currency by the Dominican government or its institutions. The source of the invested capital must be from abroad and the currency exchange needs to be performed locally at any Dominican institution. And the last way, interest, income, or dividends deriving from investments or real estate transactions, again on a residual basis, performed in the Dominican Republic whose principal amount have been generated or earned abroad. Okay. Third way, so those are seven criterias for the Ritista. Third way you can get your visa approved, investor status. By investing at least 200,000 US dollars in a local corporation, tourism or free zone developments are included. Then they would close this letter by saying, please let us know if you qualify under one or more of these criteria. Once determined and upon securing our services, we'll then provide you with further details. Kindest regards, blah, blah, blah. Now I have a personal note on the bottom of it. This new criteria hasn't been established for any new or any special law. It's just that the roots, so the laws haven't changed, they're telling me, okay? It's just that the roots for a residency visa are being directed to attract foreigns, foreigners with certain incomes, okay? You should verify through the webpage of Ministro de Relaciones Exteriores. It's the consulate, basically the, uh, the government's website. The residency visa options where they're only going to indicate four of them. So we've already indicated three more ways. But I want to make this clear and I'm going to close off the first video at this point and we'll continue further with the actual laws. And should you, is it worth applying? Is it not? Even if you're qualified, there are some, sometimes it's not even worth it. Um, if I already have a second passport and I live here or there, what are the implications? We'll touch on that. So we'll get into this a lot deeper. But what I want to get across is for, we've been saying this for over six years and so many folks that we've assisted and we've really grown to like a lot will now not qualify because of these seven ways of qualifying and meeting the requirements, there's one word they're looking for, and it has to do with all seven. And again, the word is residual income. Pension, investment, whatever, but it needs to be residual. So to be perfectly clear about this, you could be sitting with $150,000 or $200,000 in your bank account, free and clear. And you may own a house that you live in, free and clear. You ain't going to qualify, okay? So the days of coming in, looking for work, making ends meet, hanging out, drinking rum under the palm tree, we've said they're going by the wayside. And about five and a half years later, true to our word, that's exactly what happened. And this is the perils when people take a type of attitude that it can't affect me, it won't affect me, or I'll do it when I'm good and ready. Those of you that wanted to do it, should have been good and ready earlier because a high percentage will no longer qualify. This is a stringent criteria to meet, all seven of them. To fall into any of those categories is stringent. And I'm not saying there might not be a certain side way of doing things uh, or if you're a certain national like Haitian or whatever that there wouldn't be a different program. But by and large, for the bulk of the population, you're going to have to fall into this criteria and unfortunately, this criteria has changed immensely. So um, I'm just keeping you up in the loop, and uh, that's what we're going to do. And uh, we'll progress further on immigration on our next video. But for right now, um, this is Barry for Something Feels Wrong. And until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.